it's four o'clock, and I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, we'll have the pledge and a moment of silence. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. First item is the emergency <coughs> approval of work and repair of the track at Barnhart Field. So I believe this will very much mirror what we did in regards to the football field, knowing that we have to go through, um, first of all, declare the track area, something that's a, a, an emergency need to have that replaced. And um, I have included Midwest Track Builders, their notes for you here to read through. but. You can see upon their inspection, they also found glass, just as we saw in the football field up through the 50 yard line, and they're concerned about that glass being embedded in the actual track. Um, and so once you've kind of read that narrative, my understanding is the first step is that we need to make sure that the track is declared an emergency area that needs to be, uh, go through a renovation process, or restoration, renovation restoration process. Anybody have any questions? In a motion to uh, declare an emergency on the, the track for restoration. So moved. Okay, a motion by Jenny. I'll second. Second by Stacy. Any other discussion? Yeah. All in favor? Okay, motion to carry 7 0. Okay, now we have uh, approved the contract for the repair work. On the Barnhart Field track. So, working with S Craft Insurance, uh, the and with Greg Martz, who's done a nice job of helping us track all of this information, we um, have elected uh, with insurance approval with uh, Midwest Track Builders. So, the three quotes that you see there, the first quote would be to put down the track, very, very uh, similar to ours, what we have now, which is what the insurance is willing to pay. The second would be a $10,000 addition that I'm gonna ask Greg to kind of share what that sealant would do uh, in regards to the track, knowing that we also have money set aside in capital projects improvements that uh, if we decide to go ahead and move forward with the seal flex, we can uh, do that. And I believe both Greg and I recommend that process. And then the last uh, was just a bit out of our price range and what we could do and probably what's needed here at, at Rochester School. So, Greg, if you want to share just a little bit about the track and that process. Sure. The, the first one is your, that's your bare minimum. And what happens is in a lot of tracks is they don't have enough foundation and that's what causes all the cracks over time. The second quote would basically give us a second layer of protection in a sense that would probably buy us anywhere from five to eight more years compared to a normal track that gets uh, wear and tear on it. Anybody have any questions? So this would still fall under the same deductible as, in, as the incident with the football field, so this doesn't initiate a new deductible? Correct. All our deductible is $1,000. That includes all of the storm damage across the district uh, throughout the campus. And so, uh, but this would again be impact, you'll see that in the operational fund, just as you will see for the football field, we will pay that out of our emergency funds and then we will be reimbursed by uh, insurance as we submit those uh, payments to them or the uh, POs to them. Okay. Uh, need a motion to approve the, the bid for the track repair. In your I would propose that we, obviously, uh, insurance will take care of the first line item of $119,000, and I would propose then that out of operational funds, we know that we have those funds set aside the additional $10,000 for the added uh, protection to the track come out of our operational funds. So uh, if we go with the, with the second addition here, it would be $10,000 out of operational funds. Which would extend the life of the track. Correct. It's for your value. Correct. And I'm assuming, Greg, you talked to the track coaches that they like this too. And oh yeah, and th this is this is the best company around. To be honest, this is what they do. 
I make a motion that we accept the written $29,000 bid. Okay, motion by Sandy. I'll second. Second by Jenny. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries 7 0. <coughs> okay, we have an overnight field trip, boys soccer camp at Anderson University. Chris, are you able to talk through both of the overnight field trips from coaches yeah. in your building? Can we do just go ahead and go over both of them? That'd be fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, we have a couple of overnight field trips. First one here, uh, Coach Brown with the soccer team, which will be this weekend at Anderson University. And uh, we're taking uh, the soccer team, which consists of 15. And uh, again, it'll be this weekend at Anderson University with two chaperones, Coach Brown and, and uh, Ms. Coach Amandi. Uh Second proposal, which I think has been an ongoing thing for a number of years, uh, Coach Stahlbaum and the cross country team going over to an overnight field trip um, uh, July 24th through the 26th um, and that's <coughs> up at Pocahontas State Park and uh, they do a lot of group bonding, uh, team bonding activities and things like that. So it's always it's been a successful uh, trip in the past and one they've continued on with. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Are they riding our bet? Are they riding our buses? Mm -hmm. Which one are you talking about here? Well, let's talk soccer first. Soccer. Uh, one bus. Yeah. And then cross country. Anybody else have a question? We've said this before. If you could really get these in a little bit sooner, like this is next, this coming weekend. I mean, kids are planning on this, and if what if we were to say like, well, you know, we need more information, we wouldn't have time to have another meeting really to get this in. So if we could just stress, because some coaches do really well. They have things come up and they do it, but as from my point of view, we talk about the soccer group. Well, yeah, and then even at the one for. I mean, it's, they could do it every year, so we probably could get it in earlier. Okay, any other questions? Uh, if you don't mind, we'll combine both the overnight field trips into one motion for approval. Any objection to that? Okay, you have a motion? Motion. Any motion by Rick? Second. Second by Sandy. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, most carry 7 0. Thank you, Chris. Okay, next item personnel report. Okay, we have one hire I'm going to pull out separate for further discussion. Uh, that'd be uh, Marilyn Newman, our MS math teacher. Uh, the rest of the report hiring Isabel Bennett. RHS, RMS Band Director, salary of $34,500. Alicia Daly, RMS Instructional Assistant, pay rate of $9.47 an hour. Jackie Polsky, RMS Special Education Maternity Leave, pay rate of $140 a day, uh, long-term sub-pay. Uh, reassignment, Leah Hildenbeiter, RHS Biology Earth Science to RMS Agriculture Teacher, Salary, 36800 FMLA, uh, Roger Muse, Riddle, Head Building Tech. <clears throat> From 6-4 uh, of 19 to around 6-25 of 19. Resignation, Andrea Ludwig, Columbia Food Service Assistant, effective 7-1 uh, of 19. And we also have uh, uh, Candy Hayes, uh, retiring from position of, uh, or res resigning from the position of head secretary, ECA treasurer to Rochester Middle School. Are there any others? Okay, I need a motion. I'll make a motion. Okay, motion by Stacy. Second. And a second by Sandy. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay, most carry second do. Uh, we have a new RMS uh, 
math teacher uh, suggested for hiring Marilyn Newman at a salary of $67,850. Uh, there's been some discussion. We have uh, the top 17 teachers are currently at 65,500. And there's some concern about that big a gap. Uh, is that fair? Uh, there is uh, the option of paying more for a teacher that's in need, a high valued area. Uh, Mrs. Vance, maybe you could explain the process of how sure. you come about this salary. So the salary is based on our collective bargaining agreement that we have with the Rochester Classrooms Teacher Association. Um, it's built on, uh, I think, Clint, with you being here, maybe we can re-recollect uh, all of this. I know that when we went through, um, during the last phase, we had to make sure we had even incremental steps in between positions. Um, at that time, uh, one of our teachers who was hired previously was hired during a time or an era when it was believed or uh, it was okay for superintendents to negotiate the salary to bring uh, uh, teachers that are in high need areas into the district. So his became the highest salary in the district. Um, we then wanted to collectively work on the entry level teachers, the first year teachers to come in to make sure that we were able to be competitive with other schools and get those new teachers into the district. So that became the very first rung on the ladder. From there we had to build uh, incremental steps that were consistent between each steps that the district could afford to do. Um, and so this rate uh, with uh, Marilyn Newman and Oscar can share as well would be consistent with the adopted collective bargaining agreement in her 33 years of classroom experience. We're also talking about an area in which uh, teachers in this area are difficult to find. We talked a lot about programming and what we wanted for students and making sure we could provide the absolute best that we could. I know that Oscar and his team interviewed three candidates, with this one being the top candidate. Um, and so we view this as an investment in students uh, and their math and the program and the high stakes area in which they are. Uh, we are all required to answer to the state in regards to this lady brings a wealth of experience um, proven data and an involvement with students which we believe to be necessary for that math program. Um, Oscar, I don't know if you want to share any more information in regards to that. Yeah, so we opened this position up 1st of May. I uh, actually only had two applicants, but I went to a job recruitment fair, met four others, called all four of them, asked them to come talk to us. Uh, two of them, I mean these are kids that were just fresh out of college, uh, two of them have already accepted jobs within a week of that job fair when I contacted them. Uh, another one came and spoke to us and was going to be offered right around the $40-some thousand dollar mark as a fresh teacher out of college that um, with our CBA we can't get to now because we can only go up two extra rungs versus that. Um, she was a well-spoken young lady. <clears throat> then as we had a young man that we were ready to offer the job to, and then I finally got a hold of his principal, and to keep just, that just wasn't gonna be good for Rochester Community Schools. This uh, Marilyn Newman had worked with a couple of, the, or one of my teachers in our building currently at another school corporation at Winnemac, and we uh, had talked previously when we had a math opening, and she wasn't ready to do that because she still had kids um, who were involved at Winnemac, and then when she called me back, she said, the first thing I'm gonna tell you is what I make, and a lot of corporations will not allow their principals to make that decision. And I said, well, let's talk. If you are my person, I know the beliefs of my superintendent and my beliefs, we'll see what we can do. And so we met, we talked. She knew what our CBA was, she knew what the top was, she knew what her top was. Um, <clears throat> And at first she said, I don't know if I can financially, just because of she's got a kid in vet school and with some health concerns and insurance stuff. And then about a week later, she got back with me and was very interested and ready to become part of the RMS faculty and staff. And so I met with Mrs. Vance, we talked about it, and I guess this is where we are today. Thank you. Um, 
is this agreeable with RCTA? I hate to set a precedent that next year we say, well, you know, you got teachers at this level, everybody at this level ought to get there. Is that going to be a problem? <laughs> well, this is the first time nobody's talked talk to me about it, so this is, I'm just not hearing about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I imagine some people will probably be upset about it. Mm -hmm. it would be you know, we have teach like I said, there's 17 that stuck at, at that level, and they dedicated their career here. I just want to be fair to everybody. And, you know, if we open up a can of worms like this, I just wonder where it'll end. I mean, so, anybody else have questions or discussion? It is within the collective bargaining agreement, though, with years of experience, bringing her on. It didn't jump any rungs or change any rungs. And everybody on the interviewing committees, uh, I believe, I don't have a list, I never asked for a list. I believe the ladies that were part of the interviewing committee who were sitting in the teacher's lounge with me when she asked exactly what, if that's what the top was. And I pulled it up because it's right online, public information. And we looked at it as a group, all, to, all five of us together, so. Is she a teacher at one back now? Yep. Why is she leaving? Doesn't like the culture of the building. Was her exact? Because I asked that question. She taught in Warsaw for 17 years, and the rest of her career has been in. And I mean, I hate to put her too much personal information out there, but she lost a husband. Her kids are now all in college. She has now found another significant other. Just got engaged. There's a lot of changes currently in her life that have been positive. She's ready to get out of a negative of what she felt culture. And I'll just be blunt. Dan Bailey talks her up highly and. He talks our building up highly, and it's going to be a great match. It has it has nothing to do with who the person is. It's about the money. It, it really, I mean, and I got cornered this morning um, by a teacher that said that has at the top of the pay, and she says it's a slap in the face. That's what she told me. And I said, you know, come to the meeting, and um, she's busy with the fair right now, and. So we've done this before, though. I would respectfully say we're in a different time, a different era. There was a time when we knew the levels, we knew the uh, um, what our next incre incremental step would be. We would know what those years of service would bring. Um, now we're in a time where teachers can negotiate those with a specialized license or even higher in demand. And I would respectfully say it's not about the money, it's about the students and what we can provide for them. We task our administrators to go out and find the best Rochester schools. The reason for having the pay rate on there is not for us to precisely approve the pay rate. It's so that the auditors, when they're looking at that, they know that they are matching the person with the rate. That's our role. That's what we have tasked then our administrators for their role. Yeah, it boils down to is that we always want the very best for our students. Yes. That's what we're here for. A lot of times we hear from the community, well, you're not doing this, you're not. Well, to say to the community, you voted for us to do the best, make the best decisions that we can make with the, with the knowledge that we have. And a lot of times you will never have that same knowledge that you're trusting us to do what's best for our kids. I think we all agree we want what's best for the kids. I mean, that's no problem. Yeah. Uh, my concern is we also have teachers, mm -hmm. and I'd like to be fair to everybody. Any you know. discussion? If not, the motion to approve uh, Marilyn Newman, RMS math teacher. So moved. Okay, motion by Jenny. Second. Second by Sandy. All in favor? Three against. Or motion is not passed. Superintendent business. I um, just want to make sure everybody is aware registration is going on. We have an online registration. We'll also open up the Learning Center uh, Wednesday morning beginning at 8 o'clock. Um, we'll have registration here as well, and then we have the booth at the 4-H Fair all week this week from 5 o'clock until 9 o'clock every afternoon, and we'll have technology and assistance there as well to help with that registration process. Okay. 
Any more questions from the board? Any questions from the public? If not, we'll adjourn the regular meeting and we'll move to our study session.